You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today I'm going to answer a question that was asked to me because I found this one really quite interesting. And uh, it's a question about muscle fiber types. And so Ahmad, and he's based out of Amon Jordan. So I want to give a shout out to you, Ahmad, for uh, listening to the podcast and reaching out. Uh, he came out with two questions for me. He says, so do people have the same distribution of type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers? And if so, how do you decide that this athlete is better for sprints? Uh, or are they better for long distance marathons, for example? Uh, if not, is there a specific test to determine determine the percentages of types? This, this I think, is a great question. And when I used to do a lot of um, lecturing on type 2 and type 1 fiber types and kind of intro to fitness and anatomy, and we talk about uh, fiber types. So let's give a brief about this, and then let's get into the questions that I might ask. Uh, number one, so fiber types, there's slow twitch fiber, there's type one fibers, and then there are fast twitch fibers, which are called referred to as type two fibers. Now, also the fiber types, I did one of my very first episodes that I did of the NASM CPT podcast is called Can Chickens Fly? And the the reason I called it that is probably not a great title because it doesn't give away anything, but it was very interesting. And uh, it just out of if, if you're interested in learning about chickens, but it wasn't about chickens. It was about muscle fiber types. And I want you to think about this. So the fiber types correlate with what we refer to as red fiber and white fiber. They are fast twitch and slow twitch. So let's go to type one. Let's talk about that slow twitch fiber that is tends to be red. Uh, it is an endurance based fiber. And so it is resistant to fatigue. And these are the questions we get asked. We talk about, oh, this is a mostly type one person. And so they're resistant to fatigue. And this is good for like our postural muscles, but you have a high amount of endurance and a smaller frame generally because muscle fiber, type one fibers tend to be a little bit smaller or I should at least say they do not necessarily hypertrophy as quickly as a type two fiber. All right, well, then there's moving into the fast twitch fibers, those type two fibers. They do tend to hypertrophy. They are anaerobic. They are fast twitch. They, they move a lot quicker. They are explosive, but they do not have very good endurance. And so the, the podcast episode called Do Chickens Fly or Can Chickens Fly, uh, and, and the answer is yes, they can, but not very far, not for very long. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the um, eating chickens, you may be very familiar with the white meat and the dark meat. And the white meat comes mostly, let's think about the chicken breast which is a larger muscle, it hypertrophies well. It is white, so it does not have as much oxidative capacity, so it doesn't have as much blood in there that you might see in uh, within deep in the muscle fibers of the other ones. So it hypertrophies, they can't fly for very long, right? So they're, they, they increase their um, fatigue, so they're highly fatigable muscles. But let's look at the chicken leg. Chicken leg is the dark meat. It is the red muscle fiber type. They can walk around all day long, right? But it is not as big as the other muscle fibers. All right, so all of a sudden, I can kind of grasp this idea of fiber types just by looking at a chicken and understanding fatigue and uh, type 1 and type 2 and white fiber and, and a red fiber, and an endurance versus an anaerobic. So aerobic versus anaerobic. But it doesn't really quite answer the questions, which is what is the distribution of these fiber types? And it's interesting when we talk about this, and we'll get into this a little bit deeper, but for the most part, most fibers, 
most uh, are about 50-50 within our body, according to Fry et al. 2003. But we've learned a lot since 2003, so I'm not going to sit on that. But I will point some other things out. Uh, one is, we'll get into some distribution in a moment, but something that skews the distribution of fiber is, so we've got this type 2A and type 2X in the fast fiber types. And the type 2X is kind of like the pure type 2 fiber. And the type 2A can kind of go either way. It can tilt a little more towards endurance training, or it can tilt a little bit more towards explosive training or speed training. So when you look at, let's go back to the sprinter and the marathoner, we've got that fiber type that can kind of shift and go back and forth. And, and there's some co consideration. Let me, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. Let's talk about, uh, Plotkin et al. 2021. And, um, the very famous Brad Schoenfeld is also co-authored in this piece. So Polk and Roberts, Hahn, and Schoenfeld, 2021, Muscle Fiber Type Transitions with Exercise Training, Shifting Perspectives. So in this, it talks about the different ways that they, they come up with figuring out what fiber types are which. And one is called Muscle Homogenate Analysis. And what they do is they take frozen tissue and they utilize special buffering things. They have some type of silver something, some lysis uh, that breaks down things. And then what they do is they, they sort of like a profile that allows to, you to see what type of um, uh, myosin heavy chains or MHCs exist. But there's a, a kind of an inherent problem. One, you can say 50% of the muscle fiber types, the, the myosin heavy chain proteins, and they're going to see that as 50%. The other, let's say 40% are type 2, and they give this example in the literature review that they did. And let's say type 2X are 10% of the myosin heavy chains. However, a significant proportion of the muscle fibers can co-express as myosin heavy chain proteins. And so the problem with this technique is that it lacks specificity in estimating the presence of the hybrid fiber types. All right. So that's one type of way that you can, you can do this. Uh, you can, you can do muscle hy homogenate analysis. Sorry, I needed to speak slow because I'm getting excited. Uh, the other one is a histo histological analysis of the tissue. And then the third is an electromorphic uh, analysis of myosin heavy chains and an isoform expression for single fibers. So let's talk about this one. Single fiber typing is unequivocally the best method to figure out which fiber types. And you do that through taking a biopsy. And you do the biopsy and the single fiber typing is the only method that allows for a mechanical and a molecular analysis of a fiber type. And it's, it's kind of fiber specific action. Now, this becomes a problem because after each fiber is isolated, they can be individually homogenized. But the current literature indicates that resistance training performed at lower speeds due to the use of relatively high loads is greater than 70% of one rep max produces a shift from that type 2X and type 2X and A hybrids to more of a type 2A, a pure type 2A phenotype and less of a shift from those type 1 muscle fibers, at least in these longitudinal time frames that we're looking at. However, power training carried out at a faster speed generally shows somewhat less of a loss in type 2X and type 2A fibers. Um, and it can kind of also decrease or shift the type 1 fibers to a faster phenotype. And so it doesn't necessarily shift out completely, but there is some shifting that takes place. So what does that mean? It kind of means that based on how you train can shift some of the things that happen in your muscles. And this is, this is a shift because for so long, for so long, this debate continued about type 1 cannot turn to type 2. However, type 2 may turn into a type 1. They may also function uh, as a, like a type 2A, which it leans towards the demands that you're asking. But interestingly, it doesn't really have much of an effect on hypertrophy. So yes, the type 2 muscle fibers do tend to hypertrophy well. 
uh, better, faster. But type 1 fibers also hypertrophy quite well also. And if you were to just look at bodybuilders and think that bodybuilders, the only muscle fiber type that was getting bigger was type 2, then there are all of these people that are that have massive type 2 muscle fiber types, and they must have a very small amount of type 1 fibers. And that's that's not the case. The, the truth of the matter is, when it comes to hypertrophy, those type 1 fibers do increase. They increase in size. They in, in, increase in hypertrophy and muscular development. But I will say this also. Athletes lean towards their strengths. So if you're going out and you're running, so we used to we used to run the mile. That used to be a thing that we'd do. I remember starting in middle school, and and I think it probably ran through high school. And there were there were Fridays, at least in middle school. I remember this very clearly. Middle school, we ran the mile on Fridays in PE. So every Friday, we'd go out and run the mile. Well, there's some people who absolutely just kind of smoked each other in the mile, and there were some people who didn't necessarily crush the mile. But they would also then say, well, if we just ran this fast, I bet I could beat you. And then that person would run faster than the person who ran the fast mile. And that person kind of starts shifting and goes, oh, I'm really fast, really fast at short distances. And the other person says, oh, I'm really good at the mile. So I might be really good at some longer distances or some intermediate distances. And you lean into what you're good at. For example, I think this is a great example is that swimmers tend to have a higher rate of asthma. Swimmers have a higher rate of asthma. So th therefore, swimming causes asthma. No, the truth is, is that a lot of times the environment of the pool, that pool environment, that, that very humid environment may be easier for some swimmers with asthma to exercise and to train at higher physical intensities. And therefore, they gravitate towards the pool because it allows them to do something that they're good at to express their physical attributes. And it also doesn't have that much of an adverse effect on their asthma. Well, I want to go into this other component where we look at the 50% mark of where you're like 50-50 of muscle fiber types. And so when you look at the average type 1 muscle fiber proportion for upper body muscles across several studies, we see that the, the lats are not quite 50%. The pectoralis major for type 1 fiber is not even quite 40%. The deltoids for type 1 fibers, almost 60%. The biceps, about 45 The triceps are not even at 40%. So that's the average type 1 muscle fiber uh, in, in the body. So we see that, that all of these muscles, lats, pecs, biceps, triceps, we see them as mostly type 2 fibers um, because they don't quite reach the 50% mark. The deltoids do, though. Deltoids highly endurance. But when you look at the average type 1 muscle fiber proportions for the lower body across these studies, you're going to see the glute max, Type 1 fiber uh, is higher. It's uh, it's about 55%. Hamstrings, a little over 50%. The gastrocnemius for type 1 fiber, uh, a, a little over 60%. A type 1 fibers for the soleus, like 66%, 67%. The rectus femoris, more fast twitch. So it only has about 43% of uh, fast twitch muscle fibers. Vastus lateralis, boom, 50%, 50-50. Vastus medialis, higher type one. Vastus lateralis, higher type two. So what does this mean for us? This means that a lot of times when you're really focusing on all of these things about type one and type two muscle fibers, um, it, 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 it doesn't matter that much. <laughs> Because it is what it is. But what's important to know is that there are these kind of hybrid fibers that will lean towards what your focus is. They will kind of create a pendulum shift 
and swing both ways to help support you with high endurance and uh, with high rates of speed. And it doesn't really matter which way you go when it comes to hypertrophy because your type one fibers got a hypertrophy too. And they do respond well to hypertrophy. They just don't respond that quickly or as quickly as a type two fiber. And considering most of us are somewhere just throughout our body about 50, 50, we can't change, but we can create adaptation adaptations to focus more on what it is that we want to do. So it's got a great effect on uh, type two fibers, great effect on our performance and hypertrophy. But again, we lean towards our strengths and just because we might have more type one fibers than type two doesn't actually mean that you are destined for a life of marathon running. Says the majority of people who are type one dominant, who are like, I hate going for runs. <laughs> so <laughs> what do you do? What does this mean for us? This means that it is a point of interest. It is a point of understanding that we can make adaptations towards um, performance outcomes. But when it's all said and done, uh, it doesn't really matter that much. You just keep working at what you're working at. Uh, I think it might matter. It might matter a lot more when it comes to maybe some diseases and things like that. We need to know how to provide medications and how to support people in certain ways because of the different calcium chain uptakes and things like that. When it comes to these uh, these heavy chain proteins that are there, but for us, just train for what you want to do. Train for what you want to do, and then what you're good at, lean into. All right, Amada, I hope that you found this helpful. And everybody, I want to say thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family. If you want to contact me, do so. You can hit me up at rick.richie at nasm.org, or you can hit me up on Instagram or threads at dr.rickrichie. All right, y'all, thanks for listening. Keep inspiring people to fitness. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.